in today's session let's create our first mule project so for that we have small list of prerequisites so let's start with the first one we have to install java and set the environment variable to install java we will have to go to the oracle website the official one if you search for java downloads you will get the oracle website and here you can see the latest version of java and if you want the old version you can go to java archives here we have the list of older versions for any point studio 7 uh, the java 8 is recommended one so let's download java 8 so here we have to choose the jdk based on the os we have i have windows so i'm going with the windows installer let's click on the exe accept the agreement download here we will have to log into the oracle account uh, if you don't have the account create one it's a simple it will ask the basic details email id and you will have to set the password so once you log in the download starts automatically so i have already downloaded it so in the downloads we can see that the java is already jdk uh, 8 version is already downloaded the exe well, if we start running the exe uh, java installation starts and i have installed java in my systems it's installed to the folder program files here we can see the java folder right so program files java here is the installation path let's copy the path and tell the system that this is where our java present so let's go and edit the system variables we have to if i have the java home variable already set if you don't have one you can create a new and create java home variable and you can add the jdk path you can tell where your jdk presents okay i'll cancel because i already have the variable set and once you add the variable you will have to add the bin to the path variable let's edit here we can see that java home slash bin is already added in the path variable okay it's already added so click on ok now the system knows where the java is installed and while running the java application it will pick the required executables and run the application okay now let's go back to the setup the first step is done we have installed java from oracle website uh, and uh, have set the java home variable and next is download maven and set the maven environment variable so to download maven we can search online for it if you search online you will get the maven apache org where you can <clears throat> get the latest version of apache maven here it's 3.8.6 uh, here you can download the zip file and once you download you will get the zip file and you can extract to the folder you want so i have downloaded it and extracted to program files let's go back to the program files uh, here is where i had java and the same folder we can see that apache maven is also extracted and yeah i have downloaded the zip file and extracted to program files okay let's open this and copy this path as well and set the system variables edit system variables yes like this we will have to create maven home and say where exactly our apache maven presents so we have created a maven home variable given the path and same with m2 let's create one more variable for maven m2 underscore home and let's give the same path click on ok now the variables are set so let's add the bin to the path variable here maven home slash bin is added so click on ok now the system knows uh, where apache maven presents so when you run the maven command it will pick the executables properly if you want to set, test the version of the java if you want to see where your java presents you can check for the variables java home was our variable right so let's search for it so it's present in the program files let's search for maven home yeah it is showing the path 
uh, what we have set in the environment variables. So let's check for the version of Java. It's 1.8 and Maven version is 3.8.2. So now the system knows uh, the installation details of Java and Maven. Right. So next is we will have to download the AnyPoint Studio. And for that, we will have to create an account with AnyPoint MuleSoft. Okay. I already have an account. If you don't have account, you can go to the sign up and uh, give the basic details. And once you create the account, uh, for one month, you will have a free access to the AnyPoint MuleSoft. Okay. I already have an account. So let's sign in. We have logged into AnyPoint MuleSoft and uh, here we can see the AnyPoint Studio. We need any, AnyPoint is an IDE which we will use to build the Mule project. So we will download AnyPoint Studio. Uh, I have it downloaded in my system. You can see that AnyPoint Studio is, you can see the zip file, right? I have already downloaded it and extracted to the software folders. I have created a software folder where I have all the required softwares in one place intellij any point studio and everything at one place so i have any point studio if you don't have just click on download it takes more time because uh, it's a heavy software it's i think it's almost more than 2 gb so it takes time okay i have a any point studio so let's open the application So let's select the workspace. I have a Mule demo projects uh, folder created where I am saving all the Mule projects. So if you want different folder, you can go browse and select the folders you want. So, uh, this is my workspace. So let's launch AnyPoint Studio. So we have set the workspace and now let's create our new project. Click on create mule project. Let's name demo. Finish. Meanwhile, let's open the postman. So now we have created the demo project and demo.xml is the configuration file. If we see, uh, we can, we, if we observe, we can see that by default, there are three tabs. Message flow is a visual representation of the flows and global element will have the configuration details and configuration.xml will have the details uh, of the flows in uh, XML language. Okay. If we click on message flow, we can see that mule palette is available, right? If we click on global element or XML, we don't see it because message flow is a visual representation. You can drag and drop the connector, pre-built connectors. Here, let's drag the HTTP listener and let it listen, listen to some port 8081, localhost 8081, right? There will be a lot of pre-built connectors available here. If we search for database, for example, database related, there are connectors to insert the data, select, update, and Let's check for JMS. You can consume the message. You can publish the JMS message. There are a lot of pre-built connectors available in Mule Palette. So based on the requirement, you can use a connector. In this case, let's create a new application which listen to 8081 port and the path is demo. So let's create the HTTP configuration. And click on create new we'll use the default values it's already listening to 8081 and this is localhost protocol is http okay and the path should be demo save it as soon as we dragged and used the listener the listener connector we can see the details of the listener we can see here in the xml if you change the name demo for example that will reflect in the you can see the change in the name of the connector right 
um yes a source mule a source main mule will have all the configuration mule configuration files and source main resource here is where you can have all the property files dot ml files where you will have the configuration details and also input uh, examples and all will be present in source main resource and uh, there are folders for unit test and pom file will have the details of the dependencies plugins and repository and all that details needed for the project you can see that http connector is present you can see it's one uh, 1.5.25 and also there is one more dependency socket that also present for a project okay let's go back to the demo.xml let's okay it's it's failed to deploy because we see the error it's saying the content of the element flow is not complete that means this flow is incomplete because in the process area it is expecting at least one component now it's empty so it's it's telling us that the flow is incomplete so now the flow is incomplete so let's use the logger in the process area and save it let's Print the payload. Application is deployed successfully. Let's go and run the application. We are getting success response, but there is nothing in the response body. Why? In the response, if in the listener component we can see there is a response step for success response we should get the payload in this case what is the payload we have we don't have any payload and we are not passing any request body also right so payload is empty that's why we are not getting anything let's for example if we pass some text hello world the payload as a request body we will get back the same now we are passing the payload and in the response, we are getting the payload. And if you see the console, we can see the payload here. We are passing the allow word as a payload and getting back the same payload because no one is overwriting it, right? So we are getting the same response back. So what if you overwrite the response? Payload, set payload. Let's say, bye-bye. Now we are getting the hello word payload, but later we are overriding with bye bye so we should get the different message now let's wait for the it's deployed now we are getting different payload so basically when we run the application in the response to what is mentioned we will get the same you can override directly here you will get the same response since we are getting the payload here we should make sure that we are getting the proper payload Right. This is successful flow. What if we get some exception in between? Let's set the exception. Can be any type of error. Let's say custom exception. Let's save it. The application is deployed. It's run. We are getting custom exception, right? We are not getting hello world or bye bye because in the response tab we can see what is expected in case of error in case of error response it is expected to give the error description right what is the error description we are giving custom exception as a description so we are getting the same in the error response if you want a different response you can override it you can change to json and if you want the complete details of the error, you can change it. It's deployed. Now we are getting the complete detail of the details of the error. If you see the description, it's still same custom exception. 
and based on your requirement you can set the payload for for error as well in case if you want to catch the exception you can now uh, use you can set the payload here on error propagate and set the payload here you can set whatever the payload you want the response it is there let's payload let's print the payload in case of errors also let's set the payload you can set the complex payload as well let's status it's the error message error dot error dot you can keep the description you can select whatever you want you want the detailed description or just the description you can select now we are setting the payload in case of exception so in the response tab in the response tab also we have changed and now it will print the payload it will give us the payload not just the error description so it's deployed now yeah now we are getting the status and also the message the way how we have built the payload the same we are getting back in case of exception so our first uh, mule project we have seen how to set how to get the success and the error response and if you are not getting the expected response uh, from your application you can always come back to the response tab of your listener and check what you are getting as a response body and the status codes for both success and error response and sometimes i see people while setting the configuration you can see global elements tab will have the configuration details now in this project we have only set the http configuration and sometimes people will create multiple configuration and they'll listen to the same port now we have one configuration if you click on one more and save again it will create the same configurations again with a different name right in this case you will get an error while deploying the project we will get you will get an error saying the port is already in use because you already have one configuration listening to the same port and if you try to listen to the same port again you will get an error so make sure you have one configuration and and uh, you make sure the port is available yes uh, that's our first hello world mule project let's see if you are getting the error and meanwhile let's go back and see uh, sometimes i see people uh, getting this exception they will when they run their first mule project they will see that class not found exception and if you face that problem you please go back and check your environment variables and see the java path is set properly and also the system folder is also set in the path variable and uh, make sure you set all of them properly and uh, if you do any changes to the environment variables uh, please restart any point studio otherwise it will not reflect we are getting the error let's see what is it in the error we can see that could not create http server configuration one on port 8081 because the server in port already exists right so make sure you have you don't have any duplicates in the configurations yeah that's our first mule project thank you